Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of Rescaled Solar System. And today we're picking up from where we left off last week with um, the Team of Mark 1 in orbit, the Tape Manned Orbital Vehicle. Uh, the vehicle I've basically designed to um, like kind of be a bit like uh, Dragon Mark 2 because it. Uh, because it lands propulsively or something. It's like really nothing like it, but uh, you know, it was a nice thought. I saw it, I was like, I want to build it. But you know, you can see all that kind of stuff um, last episode. But anyway, I just did a quick deorbit burn, which means I need to reload uh, the igniters in a couple of these engines, because these engines can only fire once uh, without having their igniters reloaded. So I just used that toolkit, as you saw. So. Uh, now we've got all the engines back in order, we just need to deorbit. Uh, this is sped up because deorbiting on uh, like real Kerbin takes quite a while because uh, the first kind of 70 kilometers of atmosphere are really like thin, pretty much not there. You could orbit quite stably um, at about this altitude I'm at now, although it's technically within the atmosphere, but um, you would eventually decay and uh, you know burn up and die. Although I don't have deadly re-entry on, although I am kind of looking at putting that on because it is really interesting to do, but I would have to um, turn the multipliers down and stuff to try and get it to work, because when you're going 8,000 meters a second, um, deadly re-entry just re uh, kind of registers that as dead. But anyway, <clears throat> you can see the spacecraft is uh, kind of running out of electric charge, so we're going to lose control fairly soon, but we do have uh, quite a bit of monopropellant left, so we can maintain attitude. But when we actually get into the thicker atmosphere, we'll be um, held uh, in position with the uh, um, uh, just aerodyna aerodynamically because the bottom is top of the topper. I was get, I almost said the bottom is topper than the heavy, but their bottom is heavier than the top. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Nailed it. Um, but yeah, so I'm basically want to land somewhere in North America. I kind of tried to target Cape Canaveral where I took off from. Um, but yeah, uh, it is quite. I've never actually brought anything back, pin, never kind of pinpointed anything back from uh, orbit in rescaled Kerbin, so I do undershoot quite a bit. But eventually, I'd like to bring things back into uh, American soil or wherever I launch from. It's kind of weird saying like American soil and Kerbal Space Program. You don't tend to do that. And I also put my periaps really low, so we're going to be coming back really hard. Uh, we're starting to burn up at 70 kilometers. Um, it'll be fine because deadly entry isn't on for now. Uh, yeah, but Ferrum Aerospace is, so we might die. Um, so that's good. It's a good start. And we are already picking up quite a bit of deceleration. A huge fireball. We're up to 2 Gs deceleration almost. And we've got an aerodynamic failure. Yeah! Um, I don't know what that actually is, but I assume just, you know, pretty hefty uh, deceleration. And we're actually up to 4 Gs deceleration. And now 5 Gs. It's getting pretty intense. Next time I've got to take that into account. We're going through high dynamic pressure, as far as telling us. Um, we're up to 7 Gs deceleration, no, 8 Gs even, and we just drop off before 9 Gs, which is nice, because above 9 Gs, people start kind of dying. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to want to tweak coming back. I've got to learn to do that, especially from uh, like other planets. I mean, you know, that's going to be difficult. I you probably shouldn't just straight up go into the atmosphere, I should probably slow down on engines, then aero brake, then aero, well no, then aero capture, then aero brake loads. Anyway, we're coming down, I'm going to ignite the engines, but uh, I kind of screwed that, well, there was no electric charge, so there was nothing to ignite them, because they're electrically charged to ignite, that's how they um, ignite with electric charge. So that screwed up, and we're just going to parachute land, because it does have parachute backups, but it splashed down, destroyed all the engines, but it wasn't a total failure, so that's good. Anyway, I was having some weird um, problems with uh, some of the mods. Um, some of them, it was all actually just kind of my fault. Although this one's weird. It's filling up with um, liquid oxygen and kerosene on the launch pad for some reason. This is just a test I was doing with a really huge rocket. This is actually a, a five meter rocket. It'll never come to fruition. Although, actually, I'm thinking of making this. But uh, yeah, so I, you know, everything's filled up now. That was a weird glitch. I'm not sure what that was. But anyway, I'm going to throttle up the engines. Um, once I've moved the map into view and got my nav ball up, all prepared for launch, because this is a test of whatever I call this, um, <clears throat> we're going to throttle up the engines and ignite, and only one of them fires, because again, didn't have enough electric charge, I didn't realise this at the time, but uh, I didn't have enough electric charge to ignite all four engines, only one of them, because the with the engine igniter mod which I'm using, you need electric charge to ignite your engines, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, that destroys itself on the launch pad, which is nice. Um, that was like 
fifty million dollars. Anyway, I, I uh, fetch a new one. This is looks cooler. It has like a black texture on it. I like. I've never, you know, most um, you rarely see like uh, black rockets. It's always although actually um, the uh, space launch system is black and white. They're always, you know, they're, it looks cool. It's like a stealth craft. Anyway, that screws up again. Um, so yeah, I. About this time, I kind of figured it was like, oh yeah, it was probably electric charge. But anyway, I scrapped all that and decided to go with SpaceX's lead and turn my Triton 3, which you saw, the kind of 10-ton launch vehicle, into a 35-ton lifter. And I've called it Triton Heavy because I steal all of my ideas from SpaceX because that is uh, the most fun thing to do. This is mainly what the video is about, um, kind of six minutes in. But yeah, this is uh, my Triton Heavy. It took a lot of uh, trial and error, mainly error. Um, it's only a prototype, that's why there's no kind of shrouding around the uh, upper stage engines because I had to strut them and it came became unstable with the custom interstage fairing thing. So I'm going to sort that out because it looks kind of derpy um, and probably has um, a little, uh, will you know, pick up extra drag. But anyway, it's taking off quite well. This is actually at one times time accelerate, but it will have been slowed down a bit by the lag because there's so many mods in this. Um, but it'll speed up soon because this is a 10 minute launch process and you really don't want to see that. Um, so it will be sped up fairly soon, I don't know, it'll probably become pretty apparent. But yeah, this is basically, yeah there you go, that's sped up now. This is basically completely, uh, well it's kind of a bit like uh, Falcon Heavy but um, because it has like the multiple cores. But because those um, engines are technically only one engine, it's kind of more like a Delta 5 Heavy or something or Delta IV Heavy or whatever, one of the European rockets, I think. No, American rocket? Oh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it does use cross speed, so those uh, outer tanks do cross speed into the middle one, like the Falcon Heavy when it lifts heavy payloads. This is just a test launch, hauling fuel to orbit, because I am going to need heavy lifters if I'm planning on going into planetary. Um, I'll probably do it with lots of orbital docking, because I'm probably not going to build like a 500 ton launch vehicle, because um, I'm not sure that's possible. In the real world, it would probably collapse under its own weight, unless you built something like an asparagus staged thing. Uh, but anyway, we'll drop those boosters and we'll just propel ourselves into orbit. Um, we're using... this is now exactly the same as Triton 3, um, so it has like much lower thrust to weight ratio because it has a really heavy payload, um, but because it's already going pretty fast, it works out pretty well. And you can use much lower thrust to weight ratios with rescale, with a real world kind of real sized world because you have more time margins and there's just it's I actually quite like playing in a uh, kind of real world things I find it not easier by any stretch of the imagination but kind of I don't know well there's more thought that has to go into it and you have more time to do things um yeah anyway we've got tons of delta v as it turns out uh but yeah this is a pretty good rocket um yeah, so I mean, this will be hopefully one of the main things I'm going to be using for, um, you know, big missions. I mean, it's a pretty heavy lifter. I think 35 tons. I could probably get a little more out of it because it does have fuel left in the uh, in the end. Um, this is a kerosene rocket because um, a lot of my rockets were fueled with uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nit dinitrogen tetroxide. I think that's what the ones uh, were called the MMH and N204 or something. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, that's a higher efficiency fuel, but it's also higher density, so you actually get a better efficiency from a bigger rocket using kerosene. So, you know, I'm going to use kerosene, and uh, it's, you know, it's pretty good. And I'm just lifting liquid hydrogen and oxi liquid oxygen to orbit because, uh, well, they were light, so I could get a big looking payload that was actually not that heavy. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, we're propelling ourselves into orbit. This stage is, again, using the four toroidal aerospikes, which can ignite four times, which is quite a nice feature, and without me having to refill them. Um, this is still sped up because it's quite a big uh, push to orbit now, uh, but we're doing pretty well. I'm throttling down. We're coming up to orbital velocity now, so I just uh, throttle down to stop my Apple apps jumping away from me. Um, I don't know, this is technically like Earth now, so I could call it Apogee for once instead of like Apogee. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, you know. Um, that probably only makes sense to like a few people who know like that stuff. Basically, uh, around Kerbin, you can call like Apple Apps Apo Key because Kerbin, and like around Earth, Apogee because G, G O is in Earth. 
Um, I don't really know a huge amount about stuff, but anyway. Uh, now we're on to another launch. Um, this is kind of the final launch of the video. This feels like it's gone really quick, but it's been like 10 minutes. It's just, you know, clocking. Um, this is the Triton 3, basically the baby brother of the rocket you just saw. It's taking something to the moon, a satellite. Or at least it's hopefully taking something to the moon, but uh, we'll see. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, but yeah, I actually was in the perfect position for launching to the moon, basically, um, because um, I'm starting kind of way way above the equator, which was actually in line with the moon. So if I kind of follow the right trajectory, I'm going to be in the same orbit as uh, the same kind of plane as the moon. So I don't have to do a plane change because you do not want to do a plane change around Earth because you know that's quite a big quite a big thing. But yeah, we've got our ascending node down to 1.7 degrees. So that's not bad. Um, I can just intersect the moon in a polarish orbit. Um, but yeah, we're doing uh, pretty well. Um, this is a fairly light payload, actually. Uh, you'll see it in a minute, or maybe. I'll have to brighten this again. Because for some reason, the brightening mod just doesn't work on, on Reef Guard Curb. And if there's a fix, I'll try to find it. Or if you know of one, you know, leave that in the comments. Because uh, it, it looks really kind of a bit naff when I uh, brighten things in post-production. Um, but yeah, this, I only realized kind of now that these toroidal arrow spikes don't gimbal, so I have RCS on the probe, which is, I keep firing to gain control, uh, there you can see the probe there, um, you can see I'm firing the RCS because I only have the torque in the little tiny, uh, little tiny computer core, um, but yeah, I should probably put reaction wheels on my, uh, launch vehicles, um, yeah, you can see, well, not really very well now, but you would be able to see that um, the fuel tank on the probe that'll actually push it out to the moon um, is two um, co uh, two conic uh, fuel tanks, which make a kind of cool looking, like well, it's an interesting looking fuel tank. I think um, it just basically allowed me to have a bigger fuel tank connected to a smaller engine, and it not look stupid. You will probably see it in a bit. <laughs> this is all at four times time accelerated because it's you know tedious launches, but I like to leave uh, the launches in, because, I mean, if I don't have the launches, I mean, especially in these earlier episodes, it's basically, oh look, it launched, oh look, it's in orbit, oh look, nothing happens, so, you know, but uh, I, ma I imagine eventually I'll be doing interesting things, so I won't have to leave launches in for, you know, a bit of, bit of substance to the video, but anyway, we're coming up to orbital velocity quite nicely, um, yeah, and I uh, will just cruise forward a little. Uh, to uh, um, push our periaps up because our apple apps has moved away from us so we need to warp towards it but then my uh, engines flame out and I really really screw this up I mean royally screw it up I keep it's not an electric charging I'm not really sure I keep like activating the engines but every time I ignite them they flame out because they can only be ignited from a, a like a high power because they actually have a flame out threshold of about 10% so if you're burning at 10% they won't ignite so I try to have it throttled up, then ignite the engines, but um, it uh, doesn't work very well. The problem, I think, actually is that uh, the fuel flow is really unstable. I actually said you could see uh, fuel flow very unstable because um, these fuel tanks uh, are just balloon tanks. They're not cryogenic, I don't think, or they're not very stable fuel tanks for things in space. So, uh, yeah, basically the fuel became unstable, and that's something I hadn't even taken into account. Um, and I also didn't take into account how many times this engine could be ignited on the stage. It is once, by the way, and I need to make at least two burns to do this. And there is RCS on the probe, but, you know, it doesn't actually uh, end up going great. <laughs> As you'll see in a second, basically, uh, I completely forgot about all the real stuff, um, because usually when you play Kerbal Space Program, you don't take into account how many times an engine can be ignited, or how stable the fuel flow will be. You'll never, you'll never think about that. I need to think more about the tanks I use, and oh, it's gone into darkness, I'll have to brighten that. Oh, well, you'll be seeing something brightish now, I guess. Um, really gotta get that mod to work, because the light enhancement mod is really nice. And I fire up the engine, and I screw it up. Um, and then I decide to, because the engine on the Heron, oh, this is called the Heron, by the way, but um, and the engine can only be ignited once, and I somehow screwed it up. I again don't really know how um, so yeah what you just saw there is I uh, tried to escape from the um, st from the 
stage that would take me out to the moon and then with RCS and then realized why am I doing this so rammed it to try and deorbit it um, and then just deorbited this and it will burn up nicely I thought I'd leave it in as a kind of a because it did look quite nice as it burned up it is now my channel art as you'll see I'll point out the bit which is my channel art but yeah basically to summarize what happened there is um, I that I flamed out that engine for some reason which means it couldn't be ignited again because it, that engine can only be ignited once so um, so basically I lost that engine and completely screwed up my chances of going to the moon uh, so yeah that's why I'm not going to the moon this episode because I used the wrong hardware I think again it was because the fuel flow was unstable so it didn't uh, so it so that, so it just wouldn't burn properly. Um, so I couldn't use any of the fuel with the engine, which means no moon for me. So I'll have to take that into account in the future. But for now, let's watch this burn up to a nice sunrise. I guess I'll have to cut this and unbrighten. I don't know. I don't know how. But uh, anyway, but look how nice that looks or looked. The sunrise, a little glow above the uh, atmosphere, and now it burns up. It starts to burn and looks really cool and. That is now my channel art, I think, um, because I was like, hey, that looks cool, and I've got that old, really old Project Juno thing on there still, so, you know. But anyway, we're coming down and uh, going to smash into the desert after this horribly failed mission, and I think I've pretty well summarized how, uh, how I screwed it up. This was basically just a random probe. This had science modules on it just for aesthetics, and the RCS tank was using one of the stretchy tanks, which I really like um, as an RCS tank. Um, but yeah, anyway, I screwed that up and all of that blew up and it got really like, it got really weird. This just kept kind of spinning and going crazy. But anyway, this is uh, kind of the end of the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've enjoyed all the new launch hardware and the failing at going to the moon. I will attempt going to the moon again next episode and hopefully not completely screw everything up. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Casper with Tape. I will see you next time.